Sau trilet te ikel kad dis scary Soviet or Russian device. It was donated to me, so thank you for your donation and now let's take a look at it. It's basically this mysterious device with some manual for it and this cable and plug. You can try to guess what it is. It has this metal cover with some holes in it and some hole to put it on a hook probably and this handle. And this handle has something on it which I can press, so it's probably a button. And here is the cable with a plug. And this button has some logo on it, some type number and 50 hertz, 220 volts and 92. But now let's try to plug this scary device in. It has this plug which is for the old Russian socket with no ground pin. It's for ungrounded socket, so it doesn't fit in my socket here and I have to use my dodgy adapter for it and... Now, what happens if I press this button? That's interesting. So now you can guess what it is and then let's take a look at the manual. It says Kashinsky Zavod, which is the company who made it and it says it's an electric igniter and it's to ignite gas in the burners of household gas appliances. And it says 50 Hz, 220 volts, and for safety it's prohibited in capital letters to run it more than 5 seconds, to open it or try to fix it yourself, to use it in wet places or using wet hands, to use it when it's faulty, also children shouldn't use it, and it's also prohibited to leave it plugged in for a long time. And how to use it? To ignite the gas you have to plug it in, Put it to the gas burner, open the gas and shortly press the button. It makes a crackling sound which indicates that it runs properly. And when the gas ignites you should put it away. And you shouldn't put the plastic part of it into the flame of course. Some type numbers and date of manufacture. Is it 10, 8 U or 9 U? And there is a 24 month warranty which is probably already gone. But if it broke during the warranty, they replaced it basically and the price was 3 rubles, 10 kopejka. Their money are rubles and kopejkas. It's like dollars and cents. Now let's see it in operation once more. Now let's try to take a look in it a little bit, but of course I don't want to break it because I like it. It seems like I can unscrew this and this one comes off and here you can see basically the electrodes of it. And I guess it's just a spring loaded electrode and some coil, some electromagnet. And those contacts are in series with the coil, so when you turn it on it makes contact so the coil actually pulls this one in. Then it breaks contact so it goes back and this repeats. So it keeps oscillating and arcing. But of course the coil is just tiny and it's not for a continuous operation. You can only run it for 5 seconds. But of course it looks a bit dodgy by a modern standard because there is this metal cover which is not grounded. It has a non-grounded plug and here it's isolated from the electrodes using just this plastic top. And it also probably generates a crazy interference, of course. Could I open it further? There are some spacers in it here, just pressed in and... There is some pin pressed into it, maybe. What if I try to push this pin out? If it's even possible. Yes, it seems to come out. There is a plastic pin in it and... Does it fall apart now? So the pin releases this button and... Here you can see the contacts in it and the cable. It seems to switch both poles here and... When I slide the cable in, I can probably pull this one out.
yes. And this one just slides out and that's it. So it basically is this cable coming in, those contacts, switching both poles and then it goes into this coil. Here you can see the end of the thin wire in it and the other terminal goes to this electrode. So it basically is just those contacts in series, the coil and those oscillating contacts and that's it. And there is just a coil with a paper cover on it and that's it. So let's put it back together. So now it's back together and let's try to run it open, which is dodgy but anyway. It looks nice. And the resistance of the coil is 220 ohms roughly. Which is not so much, it would pass one amp basically. But of course those contacts are not continuously on and also the coil has some inductance, not only resistance. How much current does it draw in operation? About half an amp. Which is quite a lot, there's no wonder that you can run it only for 5 seconds and there is probably no built-in overheat protection, it's just on you not to press it for too long. But 5 seconds is probably enough to ignite a gas burner or oven. And the power it draws... 80 watts. That's quite a lot, you definitely can't run it for too long. And now let's try to test it on my stove. Of course all modern stoves have a built-in electric ignition. So this device is kind of pointless nowadays, but let's try to unplug it and simulate a stove with no ignition in it. And that's it. It works. Let's try it once more. Nice! So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And I also plan to take a look at some other donated Soviet devices like those.